when to use the non-inverting topology and when to use the inverting op-amp topology. Let's look at the differences between the two. First, the input impedance. The input impedance of the non-inverting amplifier is very big, because the signal or voltage goes straight to the non-inverting input of the op-amp. The input impedance of the inverting amplifier is equal to the resistor value of R1. This tells us, for impedance matching, the non-inverting topology is almost useless, because there is no control of the impedance. Impedance matching is possible with the inverting op-amp, but not all applications require matched impedance. For audio signals, for example, a maximum transfer of voltage is required. This is only possible if the input impedance of the amplifier is a lot bigger than the output impedance of the previous stage. So also do not make R1 too small, otherwise the previous stage or circuit will be loaded and the voltage or signal will be harmed. The second parameter is output impedance. For both amplifiers this value is very small, which has a lot of benefits. First of all, the amplifier is allowed to be loaded with for example a speaker or a second amplifier stage without having to fear that the signal will be too altered. The third parameter is about gain. The non-inverting topology can only give a gain of close to 1 or higher. The inverting topology can give a gain smaller than 1. This is useful when you want to completely dampen a signal. An example for this might be a volume control for an audio amplifier. The fourth parameter is about phase shift. This might sound complicated, but it just means that the output signal will not be mirrored in comparison to the input signal.